Good morning. Uh, so I will try to present you uh, an overview of, um, of the way insects have diversified. Uh, we talked yesterday about the amazing diversity of insects in the world, and actually it's difficult to understand the, all the causes that have promoted this diversity along the time, because there are probably uh, many. But most of, uh, of the causes that people are always mentioning in the scientific literature are related to uh, uh, adaptive radiations that accumulated over time. So obviously there are some radiations that occurred together with the development of flowering plants, of, with the uh, development of social behavior, or symbiosis, various symbiosis, and uh, we, are still, we have still uh, shown in our laboratory that, for example, social behavior has boosted the, the diversification of a group like the cockroaches and termites. So this is certainly a cause that promoted the diversification of the insects at the beginning. And about the diversification uh, over the time, obviously, insects are very old the same way. So we, in our lab, we found Ray and Elle here that will talk just after me. We have been able to show that the insects are existing, exapods are existing since uh, more than 400 million of years. And even some uh, very uh, uh, common uh, biological phenomena like uh, mimetism, for example, has been shown to exist since uh, the Permian period. So this time is certainly also a dimension to take into account to, to understand the diversity of insects. But, but it's not enough. Actually, uh, we, we cannot speak only of adaptation, uh, since many innovations are not necessarily always adaptive. And in addition, uh, diversification has been always balanced with, with, by extinction uh, during the geological times. So we need to have a more uh, uh, delicate and, uh, and complete view of the situation, especially taking into account also the Earth dynamics, because all the evolution of, uh, of a living animals, living species, are taking place in a real world with continents, with islands, with seas, and so on. And we need to have this complete picture to understand the evolution of the groups. And also to consider that the multiplication of species, the diversification of groups, has taken place by a mechanism that is well known now and whose name is uh, speciation. But speciation is, uh, is not something that is uh, uh, unrelated to the geography. On the contrary, speciation is mainly uh, mediated by the division of the distribution areas of a species and which allow them uh, secondarily to be affected by divergence selection and to diverge and to diversify. So th these mechanisms need to be uh, taken into account, but it's difficult to take them into account uh, as a rule because the situation is so, is so big. So we need to have some uh, special place to understand this kind of uh, situation. And uh, islands, from this point of view, are really useful. They, they are long known as uh, laboratories of evolution because an island is a, is a closed system. Uh, considering New Caledonia, uh, which is my subject of study. Uh, this is uh, an old island, manageable size. It's about twice the size of Corsica, so you can cross the island by car during the day. And uh, this is a very diverse place with uh, so, many, uh, so many species, so many endemic species, close to 90% endemic species of insects in New Caledonia. And this island is quite isolated from continents, so it's really a system that is evolving uh, by itself. And finally, it's also uh, tropical, so it means that the, this is the place where the, 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 the origin of diversity has taken place, and this is important to consider it that way. So uh, I will try to show you briefly the role of Earth dynamics uh, regarding the diversification of insects in this place, and to consider also how allopatric speciation has played a special uh, role. So the evolutionary play has some actors that are not very fancy. Uh, they are not uh, shining like the ones we have, shown, we have seen yesterday. They are very, uh, very discreet and very modest, very humble. But, but actually, they are very useful for science, huh? and namely a cockroach, grasshopper, and cricket, so insects that we are familiar with, not necessarily in the good way, but which, are, which reveal to be very good models for evolutionary studies in this place. And the stage are the diverse forest ecosystems you can see here. Uh, some uh, tropical forests, some Aokaria forests, some cloud forests. So even if, uh, if, uh, if the island is not so big, uh, it's a place that is quite diverse with uh, many different locations to, to take into account. Just a word about the taxonomic impediment for the study of insect 
diversity because insects are very good model in the lab, but they are very difficult to study in the field, especially in tropical places, because most of them have not been sampled adequately. Recently, we made a study uh, taking into account uh, 600 million uh, uh, specimens uh, of occurrences present in the database. And uh, you can see here the, the huge depth of studies that is existing uh, about insects compared to birds, for example. So you can imagine that every time you go in the field, especially in tropical areas to study insects, you need first to make kind of inventory and to have some specific means to do that, which are sometimes quite heavy, quite difficult to, to set up. And in addition, uh, because these species are not very well known, you, you need to make the data available for the scientific community. And so you need to describe the species, you need to publish the descriptions, and this is still an effort that is comparable to some, for example, to some database for molecules. So what's about New Caledonia? In the 80s, New Caledonia was considered as a, as a kind of Gondwanan museum, like a place, a remote place that remained very similar to the ancient times of the Gondwanan continent. And this, uh, this opinion was based mainly on the, on the, on the geological uh, uh, story of a continental drift with uh, New Caledonia, uh, a very old basement, geological basement, separating from Australia more than 100 million years ago. And this, uh, this reasoning, uh, this opinion was also kind of circular because uh, this geological story was used to explain the presence of very of some relics, some species that are belonging to very old groups. For example, here you can see Omborella, that is a sister group to all flowering plants only present in New Caledonia. Here you can see a kagu, a bird in the understory whose relatives are only present in South America. So this kind of uh, taxa, relic taxa were food to be present in this island since very long ago. But actually, the, as I said before, the, the reasoning uh, was circular. Uh, just because people were justifying uh, the, uh, the antiquity of the island based on the taxa or the antiquity of the taxa based on the geology. So finally, not a correct reasoning. And so first time uh, I, I was acquainted with New Caledonia, I went there more than 20 years ago to make a field trip and to collect some uh, insects to uh, participate to a, a worldwide study and to have some uh, exemplars of some Pacific taxa. And unfortunately, after two months of field trip, I didn't, found, I didn't find them because I discovered later that their distribution area was uh, westward limited to Vanuatu, so not uh, going uh, until New Caledonia. But in the meantime, I discovered locally uh, very diverse fauna, very original, uh, including some uh, cockroaches like this one, very discreet in the understory, not studied obviously by anyone before. And, and when we begin to try to understand the evolution of this fauna, we consider that uh, there was something wrong with the uh, with, uh, ongoing theory. Actually, uh, when you, you try to build a phylogenetic tree of this group, you, you just realize that the, the, the very young species on very young islands, loyalty islands, which are just beside the New Caledonia mainland, are sister group to all the species present in, the, in New Caledonia mainland. So how could a group of species very all could be sister group of a group of species very young. So it gives us a hint on the, on the situation that was not very, not very clear from a biological point of view. So we went immediately to the geological literature, which is very abundant because New Caledonia is one of the big nickel mines uh, in the world. So many studies of geology, and we discovered what was already very known by geologists from long time, that actually the island has a continental basement uh, but, but it was submerged uh, during uh, the Paleocene and Eocene, so the last time uh, 15, 50 million years ago, uh, very strongly because it's at the, at the border of, uh, of the Australian and Pacific place. Just you can see right here the island, uh, which is something like uh, 70 kilometers beneath the lithospheric uh, part of the Pacific plate. So we, we understood uh, and this was uh, confirmed by a discussion with our colleagues, geologists, that New Caledonia, even if continental from the point of view of the basement, was actually uh, an island that was submerged during very long and finally emerged quite recently, 37 million years ago. It's a lot, but uh, from the point of view of the evolution, it's not so, it's not so much. And, uh, 
and so we understood that finally uh, the situation was not so so antique, was not so ancient, and we went back to biology. Just to break the circular reasoning, we decided, after having studied the uh, first uh, group, after having read the geological literature, we tried to search for an indication of the ages of uh, biological groups independent of geology. And so we went now to the crickets, and we studied a group at the, at the worldwide level, uh, including a clade, a group of New Caledonian species, and we performed a phylogenetic study uh, with a, a good uh, taxonomic sample, and uh, we perform a Bayesian analysis and dating, and we found that this clade actually is quite old at the level of the world, but at the level of New Caledonia uh, is uh, limited to uh, 30 million years ago. So the story of this clade of crickets is perfectly consistent with the geological story. So it was the first step, and we were happy to see that finally um, breaking the circular reasoning allowed us to establish something that was quite uh, consistent, however. But after afterward, we decided to, to go further and to, um, and to uh, widen the, the scope of the study, and so we, we made a review that was published uh, in 2008, taking into account the geological history of, uh, of the island, uh, and both the geological history and both uh, all the evidence uh, available in the scientific literature about the, the living organism. And the first review uh, was in favor of, uh, of uh, a young age of, uh, of a New Caledonian biota, but it was based on still not so many studies. So we wait a, a, more, a few more years and we develop ourselves more studies and at the end we, we were able to perform recently, uh, today, two years ago, uh, a meta-analysis that, that took into account uh, about 40 studies uh, from many different groups, plants, insects, mollusks, vertebrates. And we showed again that uh, the age of most groups in New Caledonia are younger than 37 million years ago. And when you take into account the range of the dating, that is obviously something very difficult to establish. Uh, and if you, take in, it, if you take it into account in a probabilistic study, you can see that most of the probabilities are close to, uh, to less than zero and show that actually most of the groups are probably uh, younger than 37 million years ago. So it means that once again, all the biological evidence was consistent with geology. So now, uh, from this time, uh, we and many colleagues begin to consider that now New Caledonia could be uh, seen as the oldest island oceanic in the world. That means an island that is emerging from the sea and not separated from a continent. It's not Madagascar, it's not New Zealand, it's like a, Galapagos or any or Iowa, Hawaiian uh, archipelago, for example. But this conclusion has not been accepted always with equanimity because finally we, we were breaking uh, away from the pleasant idea of, uh, of a Gondwanan refuge and very old groups that were very familiar to many, many people. So it was difficult to continue to, to discuss about this, this subject. But we, we were also interested in, uh, in looking to um, to the speciation phenomena inside New Caledonia and not anymore to the way New Caledonia has been populated at the regional level. And inside New Caledonia, once again, we, we focused on a group of crickets uh, that was really very uh, diversified on the island. We sampled all the species, that was a, a big effort along many years, and we were able to build a phylogenetic tree and uh, and to show that actually, uh, even if uh, some species are sympatric, even if they occur in the same areas within the island, if you look at the phylogenetic tree, if you compute some uh, specific calculations uh, combining the tree and the distribution areas of a, of a species, uh, we found that um, a sympatry occurs secondarily. Actually, the species uh, originated by the dividing uh, the ancestral area, and then some species uh, when they were aging, were increasing their distributional area and, and becoming sympatric. So it's also a dynamic view of the distribution showing that finally uh, the endemism is not something that is fixed, uh, that is uh, uh, stable along the time. Actually, the species, the older species, have increased their distribution area 
and they have not stayed the same place, the same area. So this is this was an interesting finding, and uh, and uh, it was interesting, especially to show that a group where sympatry is existing today actually originated by allopatry. So it means that finally the, the whole space of the island was divided into some small areas where every species was distributed. And when we try to study other groups like some uh, grasshoppers, uh, also some cockroaches, we found exactly the same results with some uh, peculiarities of, for each group. But once again, allopatry, so every time the island is divided into a kind of patchwork of areas of related species. So imagine you are in New Caledonia, you are on, in a mountain here, and you have a look to the chains in front of you. Uh, empirically, we discovered that every time you look at, a, at the chain in front of you, it means that every summit has a different species. So three kilometers away, you have already a different species, and it's very difficult to understand what uh, uh, what, what is the reason for such an isolation? Because there is today kind of ecological continuity between the mountains. But when you look at this landscape, it looks like a kind of a patchwork, amazing patchwork with a, a series of endemics that are, that are close to each other. And, and they are generally quite similar, even if they are well, um, uh, even if this is very easy to distinguish them from a morph morphological point of view. If you sequence some molecular markers the same way, you find some divergence that is significant. But however, the diversification is not necessarily very adaptive with big adaptations, big differences uh, that could explain the success of, uh, of the resulting species from this diversification. And in some cases, uh, you can see some subsequent divergence after this uh, diversification. For example, this group of uh, grasshoppers uh, is uh, occurring along the, the whole island. Here, this is a climatic uh, niche uh, modeling, so you take the, all the climatic parameters of a space that is occupied by the, by the different species, and, uh, and you model the way they, they interact with the climate. And this kind of modeling has shown us that every species occupies more or less the same climatic niche. They are quite similar, but some of them, however, because they occur on some specific soils, for example, in the south here, which are containing metals and which are very poor in nutrients, have developed some uh, specific adaptations regarding uh, their, their food, their diet. The grasshoppers are eating grasses, you know, and the different species of grasses uh, have, are different on different soils. And so, for example, the species occurring in the south have developed big mandibles, and they are able to, to, f to feed on very hard grasses which are occurring on very stressing soils. But however, the picture is, is a picture of, of division of areas without much, uh, much uh, uh, adaptation. So in conclusion and perspective, uh, it seems to be a big picture, and, uh, but we can wonder what could be the, the future of this, of this kind of study. And, and first, we, we must say that we have set up a natural laboratory. I was talking at the beginning about the need to explain the diversification of insects and the need to have a place where uh, every condition is uh, properly understood so that we can really uh, distinguish uh, among the causes of these diversifications. And for that, we need a place that is manageable, that is well known, and we need a place with uh, a zero point uh, that is clearly established. And this is the case now for New Caledonia. We have a space that is as old as many tropical basins, uh, just uh, very uh, manageable because you can cross it by the day. And this is a place where evolution has occurred for terrestrial uh, organisms since 47 million years. And we already observed and uh, inferred several diversifications of insect groups which are dating back to 30, 30 million years ago. So it's a place where really now we can go further to study the evolution of different groups. And more generally, we, this kind of, uh, of example showed us also that uh, in a general way, insect groups uh, actually are, their diversification is really controlled by the, by the earth dynamics. Here you can see that first, which is quite obvious in an island, if you are terrestrial, you need to, uh, to be there only when the island is already emerged. 
but this is true for many biota in, uh, in the world. But also, after a while, when the island is emerged and when the groups are colonizing this place, uh, actually, their, their diversification is controlled by the, by the shape of the mountains and by the, the climates uh, which are uh, influenced by these mountains. And only then, the divergence follows speciation in many cases. <clears throat> so coming soon, we have got uh, some more information about fossils, because all the results we have got until now are based on taxonomy, systematics, and molecular studies. So they are quite well established, but uh, obviously we always need, uh, when we talk about the past, to have some uh, direct, direct witnesses of the past, and some of them are fossils. Unfortunately, until now, fossil outcrops were not very well known for New Caledonia. Probably a sampling effect, and because it's far, far away, it's costly to go there. There are no, there are no, no big universities around. And we decided with André, Romain, and Pierre Morisot uh, to, to search for these outcrops. And finally, we discovered many, and many of them which are dating before the emergence of the island, uh, before the submergence of the island, so Cretaceous period, and some more recent after the emergence, the emergence of the island in, uh, in the Miocene. So these outcrops for the moment are very preliminary preliminary studied, but we hope that with the help of the scientific community in the future, they will uh, deliver many, uh, inform many, a lot of information that could be uh, supplementing our, our view of the evolution of this island. And so finally, thank you for your attention and thank you for all the people that contributed to these studies. Obviously, there is a long list of uh, people and institutions that could not be put here, but uh, we are very grateful to all of them. Here you can see a, a landscape of a, of a south you know, on a metalliferous soil with a, with a series of aukaya trees along the sea uh, in the south of the island, a very specific landscape that is really uh, bearing many endemic species. So thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Philippe. So are there questions for Philippe Goncola? Oui. Thank you very much. This was very interesting and for me eye-opening presentation. Uh, I have a very uh, simple question. You mentioned the Ile de la Loyauté, Loyauté Isles. How do they compare to Caledonia in terms of uh, yes. what you had said today? Yes, Ile de la Loyauté are very young. They are reform islands and they emerged by flexure of the lithosphere a few million years ago. So they are smaller, they are younger, and they are not far from New Caledonia. And so generally their, their uh, communities of insects are, are much smaller. Uh, sometimes they incorporate some species which are distributed eastward in the Pacific, but generally they are quite similar in terms of, uh, of fauna to New Caledonia mainland. But uh, the, 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 the age of these islands is, is really much younger, and so it's a very different place from the point of view of the, of the geological and biological history. Okay, uh, basic question. You talk about species, so all the new species that you have identified have been identified through what? 16S RNA sequencing or hybridization? Uh, what in your insects world are you yes, doing? So How do you do it? Yeah, the species concept is a very uh, tricky uh, problem um, because actually there are many definitions of uh, species. One is biological species concept that is very well known. Another one is phylogenetic species concept. And so we try to apply an open... Uh, an open uh, an open view on the, on the situation by providing data about morphology, uh, some molecular markers, so basically most of the time two or three, but for the phylogenetic studies we went up to ten different markers, uh, so some ribosomal genes, some uh, mitochondrial genes, some nuclear genes, so that we have a complete picture of the situation. And uh, a thing we, we have seen also uh, about some uh, population studies we have been uh, conducting but uh, have not been showing here is that some species, uh, even if they are very differentiated, even if they are not hybridizing uh, commonly, when you go at the border of the distribution areas, you, you find actually that there was some integration between the different populations. So the, but this is the case for most of the, most of the, of the biological species. And you know perhaps that, for example, in Europe, 
up to uh, 10 or 20 percent of the bird species have some uh, introgression uh, events uh, in their in their genome, uh, and and uh, introgression is also a, a cause of diversification in plants. So actually, the, the 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 species is not a closed box without any communication between the, the different species, and 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 it's once again it's the case for the insects in New Caledonia. Okay. Other questions? Yes, Joe. So uh, I was curious about what you mentioned uh, in terms of the controversy of the age of the islands. And so how do you reconcile this uh, younger predictions that you have with the primitive plants and animals uh, that uh, were used before as a justification? Yes, yes, because uh, the, the, that circular reasoning I mentioned was based mainly on relict species. But the problem of relict species is that the, you don't know the age of a the species. They are the only survivors of big groups mostly extinct. So actually, uh, if you don't have a fossil record, which is most of the time the case, you cannot say exactly the age of, for example, of Omorella or the, the age of the Kagu. So the only conjecture you can say is that this group was diversified uh, regionally uh, with some uh, other species uh, in Australia and New Zealand that went extinct in the, in the meantime and that only one survived in New Caledonia. And for example, Omorella that is the sister group of all flowering plants, so the lineage is very old, but the, that species in New Caledonia has been studied by some colleagues of ERD recently from the point of view of population genetics, and we found that the diversification of that species in several groups is very, very recent. So you, 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 you need to have about these species to, to totally disconnect the age of a species with the age of a group. So we, finally, the relict, the, the old group, is not informative from a point of view of evolution, except for uh, establishing that there has been some extinction events in the past. Okay, thank you, Philippe. I think for sake of time, we will uh, switch to the next speaker. Uh, <laughs>